if we didn't have sponsors for that first year, it wouldn't have happened. The setting was idyllic. The stage, modest. Audience, a bit sparse. And there was much real estate for the taking on the perimeter barricades. The sponsors were absolutely critical in getting the festival off the ground and making it, you know, um, sort of continue it in the first few years. This was the inaugural St. Lucia Jazz Festival in 1992. Early pick show, Tropical Shipping, American Airlines and Cable & Wireless with banners in the inaugural year. Cable & Wireless was the lone sponsor on the Maiden Jazz Festival poster. It would maintain its gold sponsorship over the next 18 years. But it was Heineken that would go the full distance staying with the festival from inception and 25 years later remains the official bear of the event. The original sponsor, the only original sponsor of the St. Lucia Jazz Festival and we're talking about over two decades of sponsorship of this event. And it's really to align an international brand, an international premium brand to what we consider to be an international premium event. Destination, Jazz Central. Black Entertainment Television, BET, became the first production and media partner to be profiled on the 1993 poster. That was year two of the festival. BET's role had been significant in promoting the original objectives of the St. Lucia Jazz Festival. An entity like BET, who had their own platform to showcase the festival, really sort of catapulted from the early days the festival into the um, into the media, into people's households, in the international market, so definitely North America and the Caribbean as well, because BT was quite popular in the Caribbean. So, you know, it really helped put the festival on the map quickly, and not just the festival, of course, but the destination of St. Lucia. Tropical shipping featured prominently in year one, and for many, many years after that. It would be followed by many others, some from the tourism sector, grouped under the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association banner. The standout ones were Avis and Guy's Car Rental. A number of hotels followed suit as the economic benefits of the festival became tangible. Hotel rooms were being filled, taxi drivers were getting busier, and allied services were getting more business during the festival. All this would not have been possible without the buy-in of sponsors. We have seen that over the years, the arrivals and um, occupancy during the month of May has been impacted tremendously by the hosting of the Jazz Festival. Um, it has um, impacted not just hotels, but uh, I mean restaurateurs, um, taxi drivers, everybody that is um, you know, linked in any way to the tourism industry sees the benefit of the Jazz Festival. The benefits would spread far and wide as the decentralization of the festival continued. There was jazz at Balambouche on the south coast, Labry got into the mix and so too did Fordor and eventually Soufre, Moshi and Marigold. Jazz on the Square became a flagship event. Private sector sponsorship was the key to all those fringe events. The economic activity that happens currently during the month of May during that time period penetrates the various communities of St. Lucia. The media would play a critical role in promoting the event and increasing its acceptance locally and globally. Early newspaper and radio coverage took a long hard look at the event and that helped to increase its favorability. BET played its part in spreading the word throughout the Caribbean and North America. So we've seen the influence of the media um, at all levels, local, international, and uh, on the regional level, really, uh, you know, put, um, you know, St. Lucia out there in the marketplace utilizing the festival. So it has been a fantastic tool over the years. Get ready for the ultimate jazz experience from the wave. Jam Radio became the first local radio station to partner on St. Lucia Jazz. It is now known as the wave. 93.7 FM. It was followed by Helen Television System, the first television sponsor. Sponsors stayed with the event because they felt a sense of ownership and appreciation, 
as the St. Lucia Tourist Board involved them throughout the planning and execution stages. Sponsors were happy to associate with an event which evolved and grew in stature. I mean, for us it's a big pleasure to see that you contributing to an event, contributing to a festival, and every year there is growth. No effort was spared in ensuring sponsors got mileage out of the event, no matter where jazz festival events were being held. A jazz festival event was more than just entertainment. It was an exclusive experience that few other festivals had. Sponsors were happy to introduce their corporate partners, special customers and special invitees to their VIP space at the festival. At that station you had premium visibility of the stage, uh, it was premium position in the park, you know, so it's really elevating the game as the years go by. That made it easy for sponsors to justify their investment in the St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival. As the rebranded St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival turns 25, Digicel maintains its position as a key sponsor. It started in 2009, year 18, as a platinum sponsor. The event, which was established as the premier jazz festival in the Caribbean, maintains that status and now proudly adds to the mix the best party in the Caribbean. All that is made possible through the loyalty and commitment of the many sponsors associating at various levels with the St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival. They have made the 25th anniversary an unforgettable journey.